Was popping, was popping, was popping. Welcome to Nikki and Moose. I'm Nikki. That's Moose. What's up, Moose? What up, y'all? And we're back, just the two of us. We got a whole new segment, and we are talking about the greatest athlete to ever live. Yes, I made that statement. A kid phenomenal person. I said it wrong, but you know what I meant. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, one of what I think is not that uh, it, like exciting, but very important in certain people's lives. We're talking about a golfer made a billions of dollars, supposedly. <laughs> supposedly, I was, I was having fun. Um, we're just going to talk about his good because he got into a kind of an accent. We're going to get into that. Moose, what do you think of this person? If y'all don't know who I'm talking about, you know, I'll say it in a little bit. What do you, yep, what do you think yep. about this person? Yeah. I mean, man, it, it it's unfortunate the world of social media because your, your greatest accomplishments can get wiped out in a blink of an eye. But, uh, you know, with what's happening recently, a great time to look back and, uh, you know, look over my man's life. And if you don't know who we're talking about, we're talking about Tiger Woods. But let's get into this intro. Two kids from Queens, cut from a different cloth. Now joining forces, helping you to elevate your personal brand. Yeah, I'm talking about Nikki and Moose, bringing you a never before seen perspective into the mindset, the mentality, the behaviors, the driving force, but more importantly, the stories behind the people and brands that you know and love the most. And it's another week and it's another review. Welcome to Review of the Week. <laughs> and this is Let's going go, to inst like I don't I don't feel confident <laughs> about this one. I've been doing I'm good cheering people. For you. I've been doing good. This is from Coca Cabana. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Let's go. Um uh, shout out to our YouTube people who sees how long this is. Our podcast listeners, bear with me. All right. These two are making major shifts for me mentally. I recently got into a major car accident and that, uh, why do I have too much energy in the car accident part? But bear with me. All right. That allowed me to reevaluate my entire existence. My ETA coach, Ash, put me on to Nikki and shortly the podcast started and I honestly feel like I'm in college every episode. This content is undeniably some of the most critical, practical, obvious content out that easily digestible. I appreciate y'all so much for real, for real. I get so pumped off of your information. I go into application mode and forget, but y'all deserve all the roses, flower, flower, a hundred, a hundred. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? I even emojis got the emojis. I even got the Let emojis. Go. You know what I mean? Wow. Yo, okay, Nick. Listen, See you listen. Out here. I've been practicing. Not really. I have not been practicing. <laughs> practicing that is not what I read it. I love it. That was good. I've been practicing. That was good. Uh, but look, we are. How, how are you, Moose? Let's start off there. How are you? How are you feeling? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. It's been a while since we got to. I know. Uh, you know. It, it only took till episode 22 or something. I think that's right. what we're at. Yeah. Episode 22. You know what I mean? We here. Shout we out to here. all the uh, day one. Shout out to all the day 21s. You know what I mean? If you just got on to us. And if you're new, new, we appreciate you. We appreciate the new news. Right? Um, but I got a new segment and I don't got no music to it, but I'm already dancing to it for some reason. So, <laughs> we... <laughs> <laughs> so for uh for us who always like like to talk about trending stuff, relevant stuff and things like that, we were trying to figure out how do we bring it to the podcast cuz normally we do the breakdowns and things like that and the breakdowns are not going away. We actually have one today. But I wanted to talk about something that happened, I don't know, like a week or two ago or something. So the segment is and y'all could change this, put it on Twitter, Instagram, whatever. But we're literally calling this the segment, What's Poppin'? Hey. You know what I mean? What's Poppin' this it. week? You know what I mean? So, it's um, obviously, we have to talk about uh, Jay-Z and the moves that he made. And I don't know if y'all heard. Let, 
you know what, let's just let's just break the news to them. We happened upon a brand called Cristal and, um, you know, we popularized this brand uh, within our community. And then there was those those comments in The Economist. I think anyone else could look them up and see what they were. Jay-Z says, hey, if you don't want me, I don't want you. He's organizing a hip hop boycott of Cristal Champagne. It uh, has uh, become a very popular drink among the hip-hop set, often shown off at music parties or on MTV Cribs. The managing director of Cristal recently stirred controversy. He suggested that all these shout-outs for his product might actually be hurting the overall brand image. As the universe would have it, an opportunity came right shortly thereafter, and it was just perfect to you know, build our own thing. Hennessy announcing that it's going to be acquiring a 50% stake in luxury champagne brand Armand de Brignac. It's also known as Ace of Spades. The brand was popularized and created by Grammy-winning artist and businessman Jay-Z, who owns it and will retain a 50% ownership stake alongside Moet. Happy day and uh, feel very vindicated um, from that time. So... Had to give y'all the little backstory of why him having, him selling that and still keeping 50%, right? Big. Why that was so, because Moet Hennessy, for all you uh, drinkers out there, y'all know how big that is, okay? Do do you got numbers? I don't know. I didn't ask you for these numbers. So if you don't have them, I understand. I'll keep talking. But it's cool. Uh, (laughs) But That's all right. um, t- to see what I love about this, w- as usual, and how we do the podcast, we have to give flowers to our living legends. Like he continues to show us ownership, but in a, in a way that, you know, is based off his likes, is based off his beliefs and values. Right. So when we look at it, he, you know. In the beginning of his career, he was making, you know, everything lug- luxury. Like he was making everything look bigger than what it was. And so he was in like, yo, we didn't think we were going to live this long and have this success. So let's buy everything that we couldn't. And the one drink that they were advertising the most The owner was like, yo, y'all actually hurting the brand. Like, we didn't want y'all to shout us up. We didn't want y'all to even have it. And you guys, like like Jay said, like, you can look it up exactly what they said. But from that standpoint, he was like, I'm not messing with this. And the fact that he created his own brand, right, of, of champagne, just in the motivation of... You don't fool with us, so I'm going to outdo you. And now that this has happened and he still gets a 50% stake of it, that's that's crazy. I don't I don't know about you, but that's crazy and we always like it's it's seriously the talk of of social media and everybody who does media like how do how do we learn from this? How do we grow from this? And Jay has always been one of the leaders of, you don't fool with us, we're going to do it. He did that with the record label, and hence why he did Rockefeller, which is now Rock Nation. And he even said it like, yo, I didn't mean to have a media company, because that's what Rock Nation pretty much is. I didn't mean to have a media company, but when they didn't want to sign us, uh, I had to do it myself. Yep. Um, and so now they didn't want to give us anything to drink. I had to do it ourselves and, and give that, you know, luxury exotic vibe and everything that he's been coming out with is the same thing. I, I read somewhere and don't quote me as far as what the app is called, but I read somewhere that he's creating, um, an app that allows, people to fix their credit, not fix their credit, grow their credit based off the subscriptions that they have. Like he's always doing mm. something in the background. Like I, I and I think that's why we kind of highlight him uh, a few times is because I feel like he's going to be like a Nipsey. Like we are not going to really know what he's done until he passes. Yeah. 
Yeah. What yeah. do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, when you when you just study his moves all around, I, I think there are so many lessons you can extract from this one, right? Like this one was really special. And like you said, we're not drinkers. We're not necessarily into it nope. for that thing. But it's just we're studying literally just the business model behind it, the whole the whole move. So first off, I think the biggest study to pull is, or the big, the biggest lesson to pull is, we've always preached ownership, and we think that's super important. But I think another thing that's just as equally important, especially for this generation and so many people having to revert to online brands, entrepreneurship, personal branding, because of the pandemic and what's happened, people want to take things into their own hands. And we're seeing that. But the, the thing that I want to remind people of, too, is, yo, play the long game. Yep. All right. Like you look at Jay's moves with this. He dropped that bar when he talked about Chris Starr being racist in 2006. Mm. The, the deal happened in 2021, right? Like you're talking about 15 years of, all right, what are some complementing products that I can bring on to my business, right? His artistry or what he's doing. So he brings in something instead of outsourcing it and allowing people to monetize his publicity or him public, you know, bringing publicity to their product. He brings it in-house, builds it, plays the long game and and it's funny because we want to say cash out, but like you said, he still has a 50% stake in the company. So it's such a major deal because you get to pocket $300 million, You still have 50% ownership in your company. Yep. But also when you talk about LVMH or Louis Vuitton or Hennessy, whatever, their brand is such a top tier luxury brand that you now just, you know, like put yourself in with them. I won't be surprised if there are so many more deals to come from it, right? So many more collabs to come from it. So I think, you know, people who are listening right now, and again, you're in that space, definitely start thinking about, okay, even if it's not right right now, what are some of those things that I can start pulling into the brand, the business, instead of outsourcing that business all the way, that as I play the long game with it, it can start to build up. And Nick's, maybe you can speak on this because literally in the last three months, I've seen a big shift, yeah. you know, in how you move, like pull back from buying all the sneakers, stop buying. Uh, I'm still taking L's. I'm a little mad. But anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, pull back from the sneakers. Right. But, but no, the bigger thing is it's with the clothing, right? Like yeah. the bear is everywhere. The logos and the branding is everywhere, yeah. right? Because I, I would say like that's a part of it, right? Instead yeah. of like shedding your, mic, your your money to Nike, it's like, nah, let me at least promote my own stuff instead of walking around promoting all these other brands because that's really what we're doing for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, it, it only makes sense because the fact that we talk about ownership so much and the fact that we are always highlighting some of the like the leading uh legends that are still living like it only makes sense to make a shift like you can't do things with this information and just kind of sit on it and be like okay we did a great podcast no I have to like start applying it like I'm starting to think of like innovative ways to use my money and not necessarily mm -hmm. um just spend it to spend it and of course for me, I don't like doing things like a very traditional way, but like even with this, I and shout out to everybody who like offers to give like hoodies and hats and everything like that. And I wear them on other occasions and things like that. But when it comes to like this podcast, I have to now move a little bit intentional because we're we're brands. Right. Yeah. So. Learning from like a Jay-Z, learning from like a Diddy and Rick Ross and everything like that. Like if I was one thing that I learned from Rick Ross, like if we do do product placement, it's going to be, you're going to see it on the podcast. It's going to be like either all in the front, like, yeah, so um, in today's What's Poppin', we're going to be talking about <laughs> the stock uh, market and the stock market. But you'll see like 19 different things in the front. You'd be like, yo, what what is happening? Right. right. But it's it's all about what can what can make money without you selling? That's what I'm, that's what that's I'm good. realizing it. Like what's going to make money 
um, just kind of you being curious about it. Like, yo, what is that? What is, what are they talking about? What are they doing? Like even, and, and me and you've talked about it. Like, um, let me put it out here for people in the podcasting. If anybody, anybody knows anything about NFTs, come holla at me. Let's start there. Mm. But like there's a big whole craze right now about NFTs, right? And for those people who don't really know what that is, it's like non-fungible tokens or something like that, right? It's, it's, it's Now we're talking about crypto. And one of the things that Nip talk, uh, did before he died was invest in crypto, right? He said that mm -hmm. was going to be the new thing. So now that they're showing like digital art being sold and uh, the original artist getting residuals every single time that sells through crypto. Now that like, okay, I'm not going to spend yeah. on this and that. I'm going to spend time to learn about this so it could pay out. Like, I'm not saying I'm going to stop buying all the other stuff uh, forever. For sure, yeah. I, I, I have a sneaker problem. I understand this. Shout out to Jordan if you are watching this, whether it's the six man Jordan or actual Michael Jordan. We we love sneakers. <laughs> right. We right. Hello. We you see you hold on, hold on, hold on. You see the background, little little bit. Yeah. You see it, right? Uh threes over there, twos over there, you know. And if I move a little bit, you can see some elevens. But you know, we're not gonna really we're not gonna really break it down. This is like flex. But anyways, uh, <laughs> but in, in all, you know, in bringing it all the way back, I think we have to, at some point of our lives, move a little differently to be able to own and be able to sell without selling. Mm, and so I'm big now, like, okay, I got the hoodie, I got the hat, you know, so if you see it. Shout out to everybody who, who's watching on YouTube. I got the Nikki and Moose. I got Deeper Than the Brand and things like that. So it for me, it's just moving a little bit different. And it'll just continue to grow as we continue to do this podcast because I continue to learn. Some, like, we're not just teaching, just teach. Like, we're learning as well. Like, I yeah. love doing these kind of breakouts because it's like, Okay, what can I learn from Tiger? That who we're gonna mm -hmm. be talking about? What can I learn from Jay? Okay, not to not to just keep it all. So that's one of the things that I learned from Jay. Like, not just to keep it all, because sometimes we think about the ownership and we keep it forever. Yeah. Right. Um, I know when talking to CJ, shout out to CJ, um, he was like, Yeah, you grow it and then sell it. That's one of the biggest like entrepreneurship kind of vibes right and i'm yeah. known for like no we keep it you know if i grew it why am i going to give it away but um he's like nah you grow it you get it you know for uh make it on demand and then sell it right but jay was like oh i'm gonna sell it but i'm gonna i'm gonna continue to get keep the a money piece of it too right i'm yeah. gonna continue to get the money cool right that's interesting cuz I thought you had to either keep it or sell it all. Now you're saying you could do, you kind of do both. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a model yeah. I'm going to look into. That's a model I'm, I'm kind of interested in. So yeah. that gives you time to do other things, but still the thing that you build from the ground up, still get money from it. That's Absolutely. interesting. Yeah, yeah, and 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 what I love about that part of it too is like many times either on the the live show or even on the podcast we talked about like how do you know when to collab or who to collab with. We've talked about that a lot, and yep. we talked about even why you and I come together and why uh, we've where typically people like you and I wouldn't collaborate. We've made it happen nonetheless. Yep. In this instance, what I what I want to point out just for again people who are thinking of how to expand their business and who to collab with, the example that he shows off here is you can get with someone who has better distribution than you, yep. right? Like that's a major gem. Right now, you know, Ace of Spades might be in one specific region. Uh, where, wherever it's produced, it's heavily sold, let's say in the States, because that's where it's most popular, where, again, we talked about LVMH, they have distributions worldwide. Yep. So now, 
I'm collaborating with you because, yes, I'm bringing brand recognition, but more importantly, you have more juice and more tunnels to be able to get my products out in countries or markets that I don't have access to. So also add that to the list of, you know, models or options that you'd add to, you know, with who I would potentially collab with. Yeah, yeah definitely collab with someone who has better distribution or more advanced distribution than you so they can push the product in other markets. All facts. All facts. Uh, but the next part, we, we got to talk about it, which is kind of the segment of of how we got into this breakdown. Like, Tiger Woods got into a really bad accident. Um, yeah. And to be honest with you, I was kind of nervous. I'm, I'm not going to yeah. lie. Like, yeah. the, the way they... <laughs> Shout out to the media for making everything seem way too much sometimes. But when I when I heard it was like the jaws of life, they had to get him out of that and everything like that. It was like, oh, man, this is he's done. Like right. 2021 is definitely everybody's dying. Uh, OK, side note, side note, side note. Um. Is it wrong? This is going to be so bad. Oh, man. Is Probably it right? wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I can just see the way this one started. Yeah, I can just tell. It's probably wrong, Nix. But yeah, let's hear it. This is going to be so, fun. So, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there's yeah. a lot of people that has been dying in 2021, right? Yeah. Am I wrong for... Like the ones that I feel that are like super vets, like it's like, I Dito, like, God bless, like you lived a really good life, right? And not like, oh uh. my God, why did you leave? <laughs> you were so young. This is not, oh my God, you had so much more to give, right? Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, Dito, like, yeah, you know, you I, I'm with you. Am I'm I, with you. Am I, I wrong that. for that? I no, feel no, wrong. It's not I, too bad. No, it's sad. It's still sad. Yes, like yes, someone absolutely. lost their lives nonetheless. Absolutely. But no, I feel you. Like if someone's up there in age, they scratch a 90. It's like, all right, you know, you, you straight. Right. Like you, and I'm not saying no to. names because I'm, I'm not trying to offend nobody <laughs> and things like that. But I'm saying that there has been a few that has been up there and it's right. like, ah, uh, but they'd be like, yo, that person was the best in this and this and that. Yes, they were, but they're not doing it anymore. Like at a certain age, like I, I don't expect you to live 104, 110. Right. I don't as much as we would love for other people to like I'm not. But anyways, back to the topic, because, you know, I can go <laughs> this. I can go left. Um <laughs> Condolences to everybody who died. I'm so horrible. This is bad. But <laughs> <laughs> but oh, I man. thought I thought Tiger was out of here. I was like, yeah. oh my God, no, not not Tiger. Like I I don't know if you had any more golf left, but I think you did. And yeah. still, like, no, not Tiger, right? But he he's good, not good, but I mean he's not as bad as we thought he was gonna right, be, right. and things like that. He got some screws in his legs, all that great stuff. So I thought, yo, why don't we celebrate him during this week when you already know media was already like, why was he driving alone? Did he have alcohol in him? This, that, and right. the third. Was there a person in there? Like, man, media, like. CNN and TMZ and all those great stuff. Um, hello, if you're watching, anybody who's associated them, hello. Why do we always have to have a negative uh, vibe to our celebrities? Why do we yeah. always have to have, like, why do, why do we fish for that? Well, isn't that he got into a car accident enough? Isn't Seriously. that he almost lost his life? That even that he's hurt. Isn't that enough? Because there nothing, no one was talking about Tiger for a minute. Like, there's no more drama. So is it that you just trying to find something? I this is why I really yeah. don't like media. This is why yeah, it's not cool. It's not cool. I think it bothered me the most 
And, you know, and again, I think of Kobe, man, because it's like they aired that news before anything was confirmed. Yeah. So, like, the, what I thought about is, like, yo, can you imagine how his wife felt? Like, you're finding out about something that happened to a loved one just like everybody else. Yeah. Like, it's terrible. So, I'm, I'm always like, man, I wish we had a little bit more of a filter for that. Like, yo, be mindful of how you deliver news. I get it. It's all about speed and who's going to break the news and, and, and share the headline first. Mm-hmm. But you're right. And, and you, you think that part of it is because it humanizes a big celebrity that everyone has probably looked up to. So it's like, oh, let me kick him while he's down. But it's like, that's no need for that. I think, yeah, I think it's cheesy, to be honest with you. Yeah. And, and I just, I don't, and I, see, you got me stuttering. So this is the bad part. This is when I get real frustrated. This is why I don't really watch the news or right. anything like that. For me, it almost feels like ignorant is bliss because I don't want to look at certain people that I admire in a negative light, right? I don't want to see the unnecessary drama that brings in extra headlines and things like that. Like, it, it's just not necessary. Can we just be happy that he isn't dead? Can we be happy... That, you know, maybe down the line, he could possibly golf again. He could possibly spend time with his kids. You know, you know, he's, I think his mom That's is important. still alive. You know, yeah. just things like that. Like, we have to remember that we're human and not everybody's life is our entertainment. But yeah. I yeah. understand the time that we're in. But let's get into to the celebration. You know what I mean? Let's get into the celebration. Only right. Right. So uh, this first clip, uh, I had to kind of mingle in uh, the tiger we know now, but like where it came from. So you'll you'll know what I'm talking about when I say it. Winning was fun. Beating someone's even better. Why is that? I don't know. I've always had that. My competitiveness. uh, That sort sort of brings me through in the clutch. Um, when you have to uh, make a putt, you make a putt. You have to hit the shot, you hit the shot. You just sort of like drop into another zone and uh, you block out everything. You know, if you win a race, you know, you win a meet by a second or two, it sure feels like a lot better if you win it by five or five or six. So, since we're back together, you know, the flight assessment, is going to, flight assessment is going to get talked about, but let's go into the breakdown first, and then we'll introduce the, the flight assessment. But I didn't forget about it for my day once. So there you go. Um, the, the, fact, the fact that he was like, I, I don't know where it came from. And the clip of him being a kid was when he was 14, right? Wow. When he was 14, already like, yo... It's, it's about competition. It's about being the best. And um, the s- five interviews uh, that is out there of Tiger, because he doesn't do interviews a lot, he really is big on competition. He's really big on, like, I just want to win. doesn't matter how many times I've won. I just want to win, right? And, and I look at that from kind of a place of, okay, you've won countless, and you'll you'll tell me how many, but you've won countless and countless of, you know, tournaments, masters, all this great stuff. Yeah. You're you you're good. I don't think you're broke. All right. I, I don't think you're struggling with that. It's not like you're one of these typical athletes like uh no offense boxers, but that make millions and then still have to fight later on because you spend it all, right? Like, I think he's good for quite a while, right? Um, So the fact that he still has that, like, killer instinct, and even though these were, uh, those were interviews from before, right? There was one that was, like, in 2019 that was just like, yo, I'm going to play again. And I'm going to try to win again. Like, that's, it's not an option. It's, it's what I do. Like, yeah. 
I know people thrive to have that competitive spirit, right? In a healthy way. You know, some people have it in an unhealthy way, but in a healthy way. But what do you think is for those people who not necessarily have that naturally, because you could tell that Tiger had that naturally, but for those people who don't have that super competitiveness naturally, like how do you think that could still apply to like what they do? Because clearly when we go over these people, there is a sense of competitiveness with each one of them and why they are number one at what they do. So what is some of the things that like regular people uh, could try to thrive for when it comes to competitiveness? Man, that's a that's a great question, Nix. And, you know, I think with the exception of like MJ, that's the only one that really stands out where my man wanted to compete in everything. everything. It's like if, if, if we're going to see who drinks water faster, <laughs> like we're going to compete about that. Right. So I think that's an extreme example. For most of these other guys, you'll start to see that they really are competing in their particular lane. Yeah. And I think that's how people who are not as naturally competitive can also figure a way to just push a little bit more than they normally would like to, right? Pushing the areas of your lane, right? Like if I think of a of an E, I don't know if he's necessarily as excited to compete in a race as he is to say, all right, let's turn the mic on and see who will go, you know, the best, mic, you know, I don't know, pound for pound almost yeah, in that type of example. It's not that. So, <laughs> yeah. So it's like go, go in your particular space yeah. because it's not fair that you put in as much work as everybody else, but you don't get the respect, the recognition, the monetary blessings that come with it. And not just for you, even if you're okay, but think of your family, those who are alive and those who are currently coming in the future. I think when you take those things into consideration, it kind of amps you up a little bit. Like, you know what? I, I should go, at least in my space, I should go and want to put up for those things that, you know, matter most. So, yeah, I, I would definitely say that's one of the ways. But for everything, I think it's difficult for non-competitive people to just pull up and automatically start competing in everything. It, it ends up, it ends up, you know, taking them backwards, if anything. Yeah, so I agree with you. I think you don't have to be competitive in everything if you don't have to. Like, it's, it's kind of draining coming from a person who is very competitive is extremely draining. Don't, don't try to, to do that if you don't have to, but right. um, I love what you said with within your lane, there has to be kind of that. If you're trying to reach greatness, if you're trying to get to the top tier, there has to be like, you have to want to beat somebody. But even if there was one interview that it, it wasn't necessarily beating people. It was like beating himself and the course, you know? Mm. And which was, when I heard that, I was like, the course? Not Like, I've heard typical, like, um, the only competition is just me and, you know, I am my worst critic. I am my worst this. I'm, okay, I get it. Yeah, that's great. Whatever. Um, but the fact that you now put, like, I'm in competition with myself and the actual uh, craft and the actual That's thing cool. that I am doing every single day because yeah. he was saying, yo, things change all the time. Like th between the wind, the turf, you know, the, the hills, all that great stuff. I have to be in competition with that and not necessarily focus on people, right? So you know me, I'm instantly going to convert that into like with our own brands, like maybe we're looking at this in a different way. Maybe we're looking at it from like, I'm in competition with the top people in the industry that's on social media and that's doing this branding and business thing and all that. When really, if we just focus on the actual product or the actual service or, you know, the actual platform that we're on and us and just continue to understand the changes that happen throughout the years. And actually without, within seconds and days worth, there's always a new update in something. There's always a new change, a new 
you know, announcement and things like that. If we was to figure out how do we adjust just within ourselves, like how to adjust to that, how to level up on that playing field and stop focusing on people and numbers. I think that would really change like people's whole levels if they did that. I, I know we we kind of pay attention like we're almost like squirrels. Like we're like, okay, that's happening and that's happening and this is happening and that person's doing this and that person is, and we get very overwhelmed with other people's success and other people's movements and things like that. Yeah. But why don't we just focus on us and the craft? That's why don't good. we just focus on on that and we can other people will have to look at us because all we're focusing now is what's in front of us. All we're focusing now is what we want to be good at. Doing what other people are doing and being competitive with that is, okay, you were a great competitor. Great. Absolutely. Like that person was very competitive. Cool. But does that, just because you're competitive, does that instantly give you a stamp of greatness in your lane? I don't know. Yeah, that's a good word, Nix. That's a good word. You know, it's funny. I, I did a call for uh, Carl, and shout out to Carl and his whole Grounds Crew community today. And I was talking about how I've used my flight assessment to protect them against my limitations. Yeah. And some of the way, and, and one of the ways in which I've done that is I've created my own rules, right? And, and, and we can expand on that maybe another time, but I love what you said there. It's like, yo, maybe your competition is in that other business or that other brand or that other influencer. Maybe your competition can be legit the platform. That's that's huge. I never thought about it that way. Like, imagine it's like, all right, it's going to be me against Instagram Reels or me against Twitter fleets. Because you're right. Like, every single day, it seems like there's a new platform, a new feature, a new concept. that. And if if you play that, I like that. Wow. Wow. Okay. She, you just, might mess around and get me back on social. That's hey, good. That's a good That's a good one. Let's go. Everybody <laughs> go on good. Instagram, Facebook, and, and, and Twitter, wow. and Nikki and Moose, and say, we need you back. We that's need good. you back. I'm wow. just saying. It's, it's, it's a true statement. It's a true statement. Um, let's get into this, this next clip real quick, because I could go on on this competitive vibe, but that's just typical. Actually, wait. Yeah. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. We got to figure out what Tiger is according to the flight assessment, okay? We haven't talked about it for a little bit. Um, and shout out to those who have been on IG Live. Y'all been getting like a whole master class and everything like that. But um, actually, random side note, um, it has been requested that we go live on IG Moose through Nikki and Moose. Okay. It has oh, been requested. Yeah. Live. Okay. So That's we dope. might have to make that that happen. How would we do that? Can we? Well, I'll go. Same... I'll go on Nikki and Moose, and then I'll bring you in. Go on for and my. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah. It'll work. Okay. We I might like have that. to do that. I like that. That's dope. That's yeah, dope. yeah. 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 I'm with it. To to be announced, people. To be announced. Yeah. Yay! But let's let's talk about it. So we got to figure out what tiger is and if you are new don't worry we're gonna break this down right we go based off four characters because we like characters and we wanted to kind of connect with us a little bit more right so yeah. we have four of them we have pilot we have flight us uh, flight assessment flight attendant <laughs> grounds crew and air traffic controller moose in a minute or whatever you want to do because it's been a minute uh yeah. can you uh let the people know what's what yeah, let me give you a background to this, man, real quick. The reason why we're so big on the flight assessment in these characters is because we don't want to be the one-size-fits-all type of solution to any personal brand and entrepreneur out there listening, right? We want to be able to tailor the information to you depending on your style, and that's what these characters are all about. So the flight assessment, simply put, it just lets you know what are your top personality traits, right? What are those top leading traits? And what we do on this show is we legit make a connection between the, the greats, those that everyone idolizes or may have even forgotten about, dead or alive, and we want to make the connection so that if you are a pilot after you take the flight assessment and we're going over someone who also we're saying, hey, based on this person's interviews and the words and the traits and they're showing, they too are a pilot, 
This may be someone you want to model your business plan or your success or your moves after. So when we look at these four characters, we use the airport theme because this is where all four of them exist and you can see them working together. So the pilot, you notice the pilot that as soon as he gets on a plane, his only attention is getting the plane from where it is to its final destination. So what we know about pilot traits, and this is how you can begin to connect and see if this is you, pilots are usually just super competitive. All right, and I'll give you a little clue right there. Super competitive, bottom line oriented. <laughs> Absolutely, bottom line oriented. They love big picture and challenges and actually stepping up to the plate to make it happen. But next up, you have flight attendants. You notice their swag is totally different. They're not so much into the competitive vibe. They're into having a great time. They're like, hey, I want to make sure that the passengers are finding their seat properly. They have a snack. They have a drink. So they're all about people. Flight attendants usually use relationships, charm, charisma, maybe even how they dress to kind of spark conversation and build relationships. Then you have the grounds crew and you notice that these people are a little bit more versatile. They're involved in a lot of different areas. They're getting bags on the plane, gassing up the plane, bringing up snacks and beverages to the flight attendant. So we know that these people prefer to be in a supportive role, but that, that doesn't mean that they can't lead. It's just that they're versatile, meaning that they can do many different things. And then last but not least, you got the air traffic control. These are my fellow people. We're typically in a tower somewhere, but we move the business in a different way, right? We're looking at strategy and analytics and numbers and really thinking about, man, how can I develop the business from, by making decisions today that can streamline our process and our operation for years to come, right? So all four of them make up the fire assessment. There you have it. So figure out as we go through this, right? Um, what tiger could possibly be? We pretty much gave you a really good clue, but we're going to get into a little bit more. Here's the next clip. Uh, I really want to get into this. This may, warning, this may be the last clip because I really want to get into this one. Yeah. You learn more when you lose than when you win? Depends how you lose. If you play well and lose, then I, see, I think sometimes you learn less. But uh, if you obviously have a debacle and uh, really throw up all over yourself and you lose that way, then obviously you can learn an awful lot about yourself. Wow. Uh, what? Wow. Wait, wow. wait, wait, wait. Can you play that again? All, you're not going to speed past that. Like, you didn't I, just say what you just said. Yeah, you can you play it again? Do, okay. I don't think we've ever done that again. I don't think we've ever okay. done that before. Let's, but this, one, do, this one's good. This yeah. one's good? Okay, I this did get good. on this one. Hold on. <laughs> you learn more when you lose than when you win? Depends how you lose. If you play well and lose, then I, see, I think sometimes you learn less. But uh, if you obviously have a debacle and uh, really throw up all over yourself and <laughs> lose that way, then obviously you can learn an awful lot about yourself. Wow. Um. Wow. S wow. What do you okay. feel about this? So no, no. Yeah. I, let's start with this. Do you agree or disagree? Let's start with. I agree. Do we really? I agree. Absolutely. I agree. I said my yeah. disagree. Really. Right. Okay. You go first. You tell okay. me why you agree. Yeah. So so the the thing that comes to mind first and foremost are introverts. Okay. And let me tell you why I say that. Right. Okay. Be, because. You notice that he says, when you play well and you lose, there's less to learn. Yeah. Simply because chances are, if you've played well, then you've executed on your game plan. You, you've hit all the dots with your strategy. Like, you know, you, you did what you had to do or what you know is your potential. You lost for most incidents, and especially athletes who've competed, I've competed, of course, even up to a college level, when you play well and you lose, truth be told, you walk away saying, all right, they got the best of me today. They're the better team. They're the better player. It is what it is. You move on. It's easier to turn the page on those. But when he says you mess up all over yourself, that's when you learn the most. That's major because, number one, it's revealing a lot of gaps in your game. The reason why I'm saying this connects so big with introverts is because it's typically those introverts, grounds crews, and air traffic controls alike that have fear beneath much of their moves, right? Even if they're moving, they're moving in fear. If they're not moving, it's because of fear. So I think hearing one of the greatest competitors of all time telling you that 
you learn more through your baddest mess ups, it should almost make messing up at that level a little bit fun. Because if you have any sort of desire to be great at such a high level, you've heard every single person that we've highlighted on this show tell you, yeah, Yo, you don't get there without any mistakes. Right. So, so I'm connecting with this one big time, Nick's, because of that. And I'm immediately thinking of our introverts and saying, man, I would hope that hearing it from someone like a tiger, knowing that my man won 82 you know, professional tournaments, uh, has second all, uh, first all-time wins in, in a lot of these categories, north of $1.5 billion, you know, in, in money earned through the sport, that you would say, shoot, okay, if that's how he thinks about it, then maybe I need to change the way I look at what can happen if I'm not prepared or if everything is not perfect or if I don't really feel as comfortable and confident. Then your biggest lessons might just come out of those positions. So, yeah, that, that's what I think about it. Uh, okay, so I see your point. So I okay, I can, what you got I can on semi it? Yeah. agree with it, right? Um, I still think to a huge extent, you can still learn a lot from both situations. Now, hmm. why I think that is because even though you have what you think you played your best and that person just got the best out of you, this, that, and the third, uh, clearly you're not a sore loser. Sore mm. losers, right, a.k.a. myself, I could admit that I am a sore loser. I'm okay with that, right? I'm, you got to admit your flaws. I'm not trying to fix it. I just have to admit it, right? But um, sore losers are always like, yo, how did that person get the best out of me I need to figure this out ASAP. I need to break this all the way down. And you actually don't think, even though you may have done amazing, you clearly didn't do amazing enough to beat that person. You didn't do amazing enough to finish the goal, to get the results that you wanted to do. So is that just like, oh, well, I did okay, you know? Um, and so it, 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 this person just did a little bit better I could fix one or two things. No, I'm going to break that all the way down. Like, yo, okay, I could have done this different. I could have done that different. I could have done this. And it's almost to the same extent as if um, it went all wrong. I'm treating it as if it went all wrong because I didn't get the result. I didn't get the win. I didn't get what I was supposed to get. So I think each each situation gets the same type of energy. There's always something to learn off of an L, right? It depends on how dedicated you are. And I'm not saying that per like Tiger wasn't dedicated. We clearly hear yeah. it in the other ones, but I, I can't. And maybe that's why there was at the end of his career, some, some L's that was like, you shouldn't, that shouldn't have happened, right? Um, maybe that that was okay to him because he was like, yo, I did my best. I can't. I, I can't. I'm going to be like, no, I thought I did great. However, clearly, this says I didn't if that person won. This said I didn't if I didn't make this amount of money. This said I didn't if I uh, didn't get the results that I want. So I'm going to treat it like a complete L instead of a slight L. Instead of a, uh, you know what, okay, maybe it was just a bad day kind of vibe. Then how did I allow myself to have a bad day in a very important situation like that? How did I let that penetrate my whole, like, work or career or, you know, uh, competitive vibe? I, I'm super big on, like... Work and personal is separate. So nothing kind of goes through that, right? So what within the work still penetrated the, the results? Because the personal is not the issue. So now I have to break down into what part of the work or the career or the task actually uh, got through that bugged me, that derailed me from getting the, uh, the result. I'm breaking it mm. all the way down. I'm not... On some, um, I okay, think so amazing. Let me, 
Let me let me ask you this. What about the stuff that you can't account for? So like in sports, we know, you know, we call it the lucky bounce. Yep. Right. Like I, I saw someone yesterday shoot a three, the joint bounced twice at the mm -hmm. top of the backboard and then fell straight into the hoop. It's yes. like, OK, how can you account for, let's say that's the buzzer beater and that goes in mm -hmm. or let's use it specifically to the business world. You have the superior product or service. You got the better product or service. Yes. But the customer you were after turns out that he was roommates, college roommates with your competitor. And he was like, ah, you know what? I'm going to have to go with my mans right here. Like, how do you how do you account for that? Like, I'm with you on that. And I right. agree. But how would you account for those situations then? So the lucky bounce, right? You have to work on your accuracy. You can't leave it to luck. Point blank. You can't leave it to luck. Wow. Okay. I love it. Yep. yep. So to the second situation, uh, you're not convincing enough. You're not, you know, you allowed loyalty to get in the way of what was obviously the right choice. Like you needed your, whether your storytelling, whether your uh, positive manipulation, you know what I mean? Uh, whether it. it's the relationship <laughs> that you should be connecting with and make sure that friendship and business is different. Like mm. they should understand that just because we're friends doesn't necessarily mean I, you instantly got me. I have to go with the clear winner. I have to go what is going to get me to the next level, right? I have to do that. If that person did not do that, you didn't do your job well. Mm. So there's not wow. really different excuses, you know, sometimes it's like even what we do, oh, it's tech issues. Okay, so how can we avoid those tech issues? You yeah. know, we you learn something. There's some things that are going to be out of our control, but we learn from that. That's not necessarily an excuse or less things to work from. It's just about like, how do I avoid this from happening. Okay, I see this. Let's do like the the landline going straight to the computer. Let's stop going yep. off of Wi-Fi. Okay, the lighting was crazy. Let's do it at a different angle this time. You know, there's some things that we can't change right then and there, but that next time, oh, I'm definitely not letting it happen again. So it's it it there's always like something. That. Yeah, yeah, no, I like that. I like that. And quite frankly, that's that's the way that I've been able to live my life without many regrets. Mm -hmm. Because now that you mention that, it, it actually reminds me, I've always pointed back to myself in any outcome that I wasn't proud of and said, what could I could I have done differently right. to produce a different outcome? Instead of, like you said, instead of blaming it on the ball or the bounce or the relationship, it's like, yo, what could I? I like that. I like that. That's a good and, word. And that's why I find it very confusing that Tiger said that because understanding how competitive he is, right, and all the accomplishments he does, like, did you maybe rely on too much that this came too natural to you? Mm. Like, is is that what it, because you, you can't knock him. But then this is why we can see flaws in your game in your personal life. Not to bring it up, but I'm just saying. Yep. Then yep. we can see why. Because sometimes when you know you're naturally good at it, you kind of like, eh, only, I'm only going to put stress to it when, um, when I need to. When it's, when it's all messed up, now I got to figure it out. But I'm naturally good at this. So if it went south one time... The next time it'll be fine, you know? Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you no, kind of depending point. too much on that natural gift. And that could be a good and a bad. I see that more of a bad that he said that out loud like that. Because it's like there are people who are legit. And that gives a like a burning desire to beat Tiger if you are just like, eh, if I gave it my all and he got the best of me, then, you yeah, know, there's yeah. less to learn and, from. Well, and that true, person though. is going to yeah. go every yeah. day. Now, now, that's so true. That's so true because a lot of people say nothing more dangerous than a little bit of success. Yeah. You know, because it's like, yo, you think that, oh, I, and it's like, no, you just got a taste. 
Right. Let you start treating that as if you finally arrived or achieved your personal legacy. That keeps you way below than you know where you're supposed to be. So that's a good point. That's that's a definitely a good way to look at it. Like, don't walk away from a situation, you know, pointing a finger like, oh, I didn't happen because. He or she did that or didn't do that. That's a, that's a good word. And I know, so this is the thing, I know it's hard to blame ourselves sometimes. You know, some people really struggle with uh, self-accountability. Why do like, you think that is? It's easier to blame other people. It's easier to find the blame instead of really seeking in, like, what could I have done differently? You know, and... Like, I understand it because sometimes I, I struggle with that as well. Like, mm -hmm. I'm like, did you not see what this person did? Like, why are we coming at me? That person needed to do A, B, C, D before I even touched it. What are you talking about? Right. Mm -hmm. But then again, could I have made the process a lot faster if I didn't wait for that person? Like, could I have tapped that person? Hey, hey, could I been a little bit more forceful instead of allowing the power to be so much on the other person to, you know, steer the the boat and things like that, possibly, right? I have to, you know, I have to think of things like that and not, not a lot of people are good at that part. Not yeah. because it, it, it could be a self issue. Like, yo, there's something wrong with me. That like, are you telling me every single thing that happens is my fault? Yeah, mm -hmm. I am in some way, shape, or form. And that's not easy to swallow all the time. That's not like every single thing that happens that doesn't go my way is my fault. I could have done something different in every single thing. To be honest, yes. There's yeah, something. Yeah. If you yeah, are a part yeah. of it, there is something. That's what do true. you think? I, yeah, I agree. I agree. Especially for some of us who, let's just be honest, who come from, you know, the, the wrong side of the tracks, yeah. you know, like who don't have the opportunity to uh, maybe press snooze a couple of times more than we should mm -hmm. or, you know, spend money we shouldn't be spending. You know, like at some point, that's a like those habits or traits are legit deal breakers for many of us. So you translate that into the work side of things, like you said, not taking personal accountability, not going the extra step, that can backfire because we don't have second chances like that. So yeah, I do think it's critical and it's, and, and also, and just to say this, if you're lucky enough to have someone in your life who's constantly on you that way, because that was the relationship between, you know, uh, even with me and my dad, and that at one point wasn't really as much as it appreciated as it should have been. But as I look back and kind of revisited it with a new level of maturity, I'm like, man, I'm, I wish I had someone like that today who's constantly reminding you of your potential and, and makes you feel as if nothing feels great. And while we think like, dang, you're never satisfied, but you... I benefited 100% from the push. Like, you know, whoever is pushing you, they don't really benefit from, from your growth like that. Yeah. I guess, sure, through soul ties, but more than anything, you get the biggest gift or the biggest benefit because you're the one developing. You're the one becoming more prepared for your next walk. So, yeah, I think for those who have that person in their life, man, go say thank you real quick. <laughs> um, Go say thank you. Go say thank you real quick. <laughs> so I think that alone, like, can really determine what Tiger is. And there's so much we could we could really go over, but I really wanted to focus on these two things because it's like one, we gotta understand how to have that competitiveness, like you said, within our own lane, right? But then as well as accountability, like as well mm -hmm. as like, yo, there's things that we can learn from every single thing. There's something that we can do different with every single situation, good or bad. I even think on wins, you could still learn something. We That's what if he would have said that, like the wins, maybe not so much. I'm learning from compared to the L's, but you gave it two different categories with the L's. And I was like, 
Yeah, no, not so much. If I won, if I got what I needed to, I may not learn so much from that one. I would look for the gaps a little bit, but I wouldn't learn so much. But if it's an L in any way, shape, mm. or form, oh, no, we're breaking that all the way down. We're not treating that as a, a small thing. That's a big thing. We have to figure this out. You know this with with even our situations with some of the webinars that we do. To some, it's a big win. To some, it's like, yo, do you know what you did? Like, oh, my God. Like, th no one else is doing that in the game. No one. And I'm like, nah, it's not enough. Like, it's we didn't reach the goal that we wanted. So this is not enough. It's not, it's not what we do. Right. What are you talking about? But right. to some, it's a win. But to us, even though we understood that there was some things we could, that were out of our control. Mm -hmm. Um, no, 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 sir. Yeah. No, ma'am. It's not good enough. We're breaking it all the way down. I'm treating it like, this was all the way trash. I'm coming up with a whole new idea. No, no, no. Don't come <laughs> up with a whole... And I think that's the problem with me as far as... And I can't speak for all pilots. I'm just going to speak for me and my pilot, right? Because me and my pilot is unique, right? Um, but I feel like if there's an L, like I'm swipe... I'm all things that did work before clearly doesn't work anymore. I don't care if this is the first L... Like, it clearly doesn't work anymore. We got to think of a whole new plan, right? That's not always the greatest thing because that's so dramatic. And I'm aware of this. But sometimes it works out. Like, what is a happy medium for that? Well, you know, immediately what I think of the positive of that is you'll never get caught sleeping. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as something happens, you're like, oh, what's up? Hold up. You know, like, let's, let's, let's address this where a lot of people end up getting caught with, like they say, with their pants down because they was just like, ah, nah, we good. And then you, you find yourself in a, in a bad situation that you just shouldn't have been in. So I think, I think you got you to gotta play, I'm being a little bit patient in certain times just to give it enough time to fully play out. I would say that's the balance with it. But I see a lot of positives from it too, though. So I can't say that it's terribly, you know, wrong or bad because, like I said, being that proactive person, especially in today's world of, of business and entrepreneurship, man, it's, it's so critical. Look, I got to learn patience, people. Patience. Uh, 2025, it's coming. It's <laughs> oh, man. 2025, yeah. all right? But let's, let's figure out what Tiger is. Even even though this is easy, even even though this yeah, is, you want to go first, I go first. What are we doing? Uh, you go first. Go for it. Yeah. Go all for right. It. All right. Um, this, this, I don't think I really got to put the suspense thing, but okay. Why don't we do it? Um, I can positively say that he is not a flight attendant. Yeah. Yeah. My man 100%. in in one of his interviews um, was like, because they were saying, yo, is it hard to be you? Like you got famous like super early, like super yeah. early, right? And he's like, look, I just got to maneuver a different way. Like I have to go to like private buildings and settings and like I'm not outside like that no more. Like I, I'll... I really appreciate uh, just being to ourselves with our loved ones. I was like, oh, you're definitely not a flight attendant. Definitely. Diary. Yeah, he's not trying to see and nobody. He, yeah, she, yeah, nobody. <laughs> you don't want to do anything. But that, I think that's also crazy. Like once you get to that status, like you have to pay to be alone. Yeah. That's yeah, a that's fee. Crazy. Can we talk about the celebrity fees that are not really put into that? Like, yeah. being alone, like paying. Sometimes you, the biggest fee is like paying for convenience, but now you're paying for alone time. That's almost yeah, like paying for crazy. friends. That's weird. That's I crazy. Just, yeah. I don't yeah. get it. Anyways, that's tag you're it. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm gonna confidently say that he is not. A grounds crew. Oh. 
No, he doesn't. Ball grounds crazy. No, he's not patient. <laughs> he's not. I mean, he plays golf. You got to be patient for golf. True, true. Okay. Uh, no. Nah. 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 Uh-uh. <laughs> oh. I was. Sorry, Grounds Crew. I was, I was rooting for you. That's why you weren't the first one to go like normal. I mean, <laughs> all right. Um, I think I can confidently say um, that he is not. Uh, air traffic controller. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. We have another one. Another pilot. In there our midst, we do, there all right? We see it, we see it. Yes, we have another pilot. It was very evident, the fact that he was 14 talking about com- being competitive and, like, won so many. And when they were like, uh, you've done a lot. You're like, yeah, there's more. What? Mm. Like, it, I, I think his latest win was, what, in 2019 or something like that? The last yeah, Masters? Yeah, he had a big comeback. Yeah, he had a big comeback. Yeah, that's... That's crazy. You have nothing else to prove, sir. You have not mm-hmm. look on on Nikki and Moose. You are celebrated. We appreciate you and everything that you did, not only in the sport of golf, but for minorities. Period. Like yep. even hearing some of the stories, it was like, yo, there was some golf courses I wasn't allowed on, you know, and that's crazy. You know, just hearing even like though that was like 1990 something or 80 something, whatever. But still to hear it currently is just like, oh, that's so sad. Mm -hmm. Like that's so trash. Right. But uh, for what you've done and just hopefully you get a lot of rest, a speedy recovery, all that great. I'm, I'm acting like Tiger. You're watching this because you know maybe one day you will when you get old and you're like, I would like to talk, to, listen to all the people who talk really nice about me. Oh, who is this Nikki and Moose people? Let me listen. Now, shout out to you because I know you're gonna watch when you're old. Yeah, you know I me. Mean? Oh, let's go. <laughs> Thanks for watching, Tiger. Yeah, thank you, thank you for watching. Um, look, real quick, real quick. Uh, follow us. Follow us everywhere, okay? Follow us everywhere. And we got a special announcement. So y'all know that um, normally we do the Facebook Live. I always get on here and say, go check us out on Facebook every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Well, now we are going to be on YouTube Live every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Hey. You know I mean? Okay, so uh, shout out to YouTube. Shout out to all our YouTube subscribers. If you are not a subscriber, go over there. Go Nikki and Moose. Type us in YouTube.com slash Nikki and Moose or just look up Nikki and Moose. Uh, N-I-C-K-Y, please, people. Like, y'all spell Nikki in the most weirdest ways. It's not that deep. It's right down there, over there. Well, somewhere there. Over there. That way. Okay, it's there. Just do that for me. But anyways, uh, Moose, how'd how'd you feel about this episode? How'd you feel? This was dope. This was dope. The energy on here was good. And uh, like you said, it's been a while since we rocked. So this was dope. I know. It's crazy. But I get to finally ask. Yay, wait, 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 (laughs) wait. wait. It's been a while. It's been a while. while. I miss the bars. I miss the bars. Moose, final words. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go off of that J move. I think that's so critical just for the culture, for everyone really just watching. It's like, yo, remember to play the long game. I think I think right now in today's world with instant gratification, a lot of things convenience at the tip of our fingers, it's those who play the long game that get rewarded the most. 